Hey guys, Phil here. Um, today I'm going to be actually be bringing you a kind of post-game look at a game I played yesterday as Axe. And uh, I am currently playing my way through uh, the Hero Challenge. So, you know, I'm still in the A's. Um, so it'll be in the B's, hopefully. Um, but yeah, uh, so this game is a game I played with Axe. And I was playing with my friend Bulldog. He's Lich. And we decided that our... Our starting strategy was just going to be to uh, creep jump the lane and uh, we were just going to creep jump the lane and he's going to grab, he grabbed uh, his armor first, which I think is actually a pretty good idea, um, especially when Axe is going to be taking so much punishment. It's nice to have that little bit of extra armor, especially looking at their team since they have all ranged heroes. Now, um, I, I didn't show you the draft. I'm pretty sure a lot of them picked against me because I was one of the first to pick my hero. Um, so I think that's why a lot of them picked range. Like Sniper and Skywrath, for example, were picked after my pick. So I probably could have waited a little longer to pick. I picked at like, I picked when there was like 10 seconds left. Kind of a new mistake, but yeah. Oh well. Um, Oh, let's just skip forward this. I think we, this guy pauses for a while. Okay, here we go. This is better. Um, so we decided to contest the rune. The sniper's just standing here. Um, I have frost armor, so I'm not too worried about him kiting me or any shit like that. It was a pretty good, uh, pretty good encounter. We didn't really lose anything. Sniper probably lost a consumable, and uh, we decided to put a ward right there in their jungle because um, that would catch mid rotations and especially rotations from the lane through the jungle um, to us. So I, I hear I actually missed the first creep wave because of our shenanigans at the rune. Um, so I just decided to go back to lane. That was kind of a mistake on my part. I thought the creeps would come a bit later, and then my buddy reminded me that they didn't. So, here we are back in the lane. Um, yeah, we just hung out here for a while, <laughs> taking flak from Sniper, um, until we decided to, I think the next wave, we decided to go creep jumping. So, um, the rest of our team is actually did pretty well um, in their laning. I don't think I had anything to complain about. Everyone hold their own, held their own pretty much. Um, and I think our mid, our mid really won her lane, which really helped us. So here I go. I'm going back to cut off this wave. Um, but the, the Rubik and Sniper definitely know us up because, um, I think after I take this wave, they come and, they come and contest me. But, uh, this was at least a pretty decent wave. I uh, don't know if you guys have been completely up to date, but uh, I've been watching. Uh, I've been watching TI Five. Um, today's day two. Well, when I upload this, it won't be day two. I think when I upload this, it'll actually be. It'll actually be when the events, the main events taking place. But anyway, this is, I'm recording this on day two of the whole event. Um, day two of the group stages. So yesterday was group one and, uh, um, LGD is looking really strong. Um, them and Secret are looking to be some of the top, top contenders. Um, Navi, pretty decent. I think they went two and two. And then of course there's like MVP, um, who didn't do quite as well. It'll be interesting to see what comes out of this group stage. So yeah, the uh, sniper and Rubik, they know what's up. They don't want me to, uh, to scre uh, creep jump at all. Which is awesome because it's actually taking them right out of lane and sniper is missing out on a lot of XP. Oh, by the way, I apologize guys if there's like lots of background noise. I'm going to try to get rid of it uh, as much of it as I can, but, uh, um, I'm leaving my window open because it's hot as balls here. It's like 
well, if you, if, if, let me try to do this in Fahrenheit and Celsius. So in Celsius here, it's about like 33 degrees plus humidity. So it feels about 40 Fahrenheit. Um, uh, you, you'll probably tell me I'm wrong, but I guess Fahrenheit, that's around, I don't know, 90, 95 ish feels like 104. I'm just going to throw out those numbers. So here comes Sniper again. Um, and he's made a critical mistake. And I've timed it well. So here I try to run after him. I don't want to just right click him. There we go. I want him to get in as many swing, um, as many spins as possible. Um, but unfortunately, Rubik came to finish me off. And my buddy's a little late to the show. But at least he got a CS here. Um, yeah, not a terrible start. Not a terrible start. Um, one and one. Killed the sniper. I, I they think sniper, sniper for an axe is a pretty good trade. Um, and, you know, I'm not the carry uh, by any means. We've got a Void. We've got a Lena. Um, who Lena turned out to be quite a powerhouse. So that was pretty cool. So we just try to get in as much harassment here as we can. Um, you'll notice that I'm going to build straight into a Vanguard. I'm not going to build... I did get a Ring of Protection, but I'm not going to build the Tranks because I am taking so much direct damage and I'm doing a lot of creep jumping. So Tranks would kind of be useless. You know, I'm not a, I'm not jungling as an axe. If I were jungling, I'd definitely pick up Tranquil Boots and, you know, do the whole dropping them thing and stacking. But since I'm creep jumping, I go straight for the Vanguard. Um, and I'm not even worried about actually upgrading my boots to anything at all. And so here with the Frost Armor, I'm not even worried about taking harassment because I can take it. I've got that Ring of Health. Um, and as you know, Axe has the highest starting HP regen. I think his starting HP regen is like something ridiculous like 4. Um, yeah, it's 4 HP regen base, which is insane for a level 1. So this was awesome. Lena came and rotated, which is exactly what we needed. So we mopped that up, and uh, and then we had the whole lane to ourselves for you know a good 15 seconds. That was really ideal. Our Lena was was kick ass. She knew where to be, and uh, that's super helpful from a mid. If you're playing mid, um, especially a mid who has good disables um, and really good nuke. Uh, like Lena, you know, mids like TA, mids like uh, um, Invoker, of course, uh, you really want to be rotating a lot. If you're a mid like an SF or um, if you're like a, a Dragonite mid, um, you're generally not going to be rotating too much. So here we have that ward up, as you can see down on the mini map. TA is thinking of rotating over. Um, fortunately, we have that ward up there. Um, so that was well planned. I'll take credit for that. <laughs> but uh, my friend Bulldog here, he he was an awesome number five, and he just bought wards for us like all game, all game. <laughs> yeah, he wants us. To, he wanted us to push, obviously, but we were gonna fall for that shit. <laughs> Oh, so nice. I went to the beach today. It was beautiful. Went for a swim, swim across the lake. Uh, it was awesome. So we got a little bit of fights going up top. White had to buy back. <laughs> so you'll see that Lich... Uh, put his ring of protection on me because he didn't want to quite finish his uh, trank boots yet, which is fine. I think he was building something else that required ring of protection. I think he was building... I'm not sure what he was building. He was building something else and didn't want to complete it yet. So I held on to that for him. No problem. I got the room, um, which is awesome if you can do that for your friends. You know. When your friends have, I don't have enough room, you know, you let them put stuff in your garage and you just... You know, I kind of act like a, like a diamond storage storage facility for your friends. 
<laughs> more creep jumping. Um, by this time, I don't really know where Sniper went. Uh, Rubik did go top, but I have no idea where Sniper was at this point. Sniper was just completely out of the lane, which was awesome. Don't really care where Sniper is, because he's not in any of the lanes, which means he's probably not maximizing his farm potential. Um, oh, I just saw him in mid there. So, here's something I probably could have done better at this point was, I probably should have stayed in lane right there and grabbed that other wave. I just didn't know where Sniper and, uh, and TA were, so I was a little scared. But I also could have gone and, uh, I had time to go stack a camp, which I feel like that's what I should have done. I also should have had a TP on me to help out for this fight. So at least Lich was here to help out. Um, but I wasn't too worried. We weren't very behind, and you know, shit happens. Hindsight's twenty twenty. I'm not sure at this point what I was thinking of doing. I think I was just rotating mid to grab some extra farm. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was doing. Because I knew TA was top, and I think the rest of their team was back, and uh, the sniper was bottom. So here's TA's mid, but TA. TA really can't contest me too much at this point. She gets pretty fat later, but uh, here we go. So I think I... I think at this point, TA... I'm trying to wait for this TA to get in close range. See, I, I leave the lane, grab the rune, so TA gets bold, thinks I've left, and I'm going to come back. And invis, like, that was the... Like, I couldn't have gotten a better fucking rune. So here we go. Boom. And again, Lena, totally on point. So, props to her. And once again, the lane is ours. And uh, it's just a matter of keeping the pressure on. As you can see, we got the bottom tower. Just because they had nobody down there. Uh, Sniper goes there to pick up a bit of free farm now, but... Um, he's, he's fallen behind. Um, let's actually look at the gold graph at this point. So yeah, I mean, it's in our favor. Um, not, uh, not a whole lot though. Um, I look at the XP graph. Yeah, about the same. So we're, we're, we're leading by a little bit. Now here, I, I, I... If I had been a bit earlier, I think I could have contested the, uh, con I, I think I could have really gotten this, this sniper in a bad position, but, um, I didn't have any mana either, so that was kind of shitty. He was just able to TP. If I had had mana, I would have, I would have gotten him. So, Axe is going to have mana issues. There's no way around it. Um, maybe if I had had, like, treads i could have tread switched but no one really gets treads power treads on axe um uh, I, what i did here was i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna get my blink dagger next because blink dagger is essential for axe and then straight after that um well eventually i'm gonna get boots of travel because boots of travel on axe is great the movement speed the 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 dependable movement speed is is fantastic you know as with with tranquils um it's pretty fast but if you get hit then you lose like 30 movement speed um with boots of uh, travel i think it's like a steady 405 movement speed on axe um so yeah or close to 400. Now that I've, I've got my vanguards and the other team is not really ahead by much, I don't feel too, too in danger by just roaming around the map. So that's kind of what I do is I'm going to roam around the map looking for, looking for jungle spots. Um, and just, just soak up the, the experience where I can grab that gold. Um, getting that blink dagger is really important. Gotta stay hydrated. Now I'm saying.
So this was a great chrono. Great chrono by, uh... And we got really lucky bounce. Look at this shit. Boom. Boom. Just got him. That was really lucky. I was thinking of TPing, um, and I would have if things were going south, but I didn't have a blink dagger by this time, so I was kind of iffy about it. But I did grab a TP just in case, because honestly, I should have had a TP um, this entire time. But let me see if I can grab this sniper again. Um, oh, no. I mistimed myself a little bit here. Um, I could have played this much better. But unfortunately, I got blocked by the creeps a little bit. He wasn't... Oh, he was within range there. I couldn't quite get the dunk. And I think he TP'd out at this point. I, I, oh, no. He Mirana ulted. Oh, that sneaky son of a bitch. That's what happened. See, I thought he may have TP'd. No. No, he Mirana ulted. That makes sense now. I was a little confused at the time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And we couldn't see any of them on the map either. So, I had no idea that's what happened. That's that's a good friend of his, though. That's a good friend of his. I totally would have had him if he hadn't run ulted. Shit. Marana players. That's how you watch a team's back. Blitz just got caught out here uh, warding. Again, this guy was dropping out wards all the time. That's fantastic. Um, it would have been a much different game had we not have had all the wards that we did. So at this point, I'm looking just for a couple hundred more gold, but I waste quite a bit of time. I, I think I did make the right decision leaving their jungle because they did have a TA and they had two bottom. Um, and I realized at this point I probably couldn't take those creeps, those ancients, without really suffering a lot of damage. So um, I think at this point I just decided to go into the jungle and grab some farm there from, from the SK. Because the SK already has his blink dagger, but he's still farming. So, and I, of course, mistimed the stack because I'm a scrub and I can't stack shit. Lesson learned, don't pull that camp to the right, you gotta pull them uh, north, you gotta pull them upwards, and they'll follow you farther. Um, but again, if you're stacking, you don't want to start fighting them and then pull them. That's just, that's just a no-no. <laughs> In any case, not, not too big of a deal, this creep here, this camp here spawned as well, grab those, and I think this gave me my blink dagger. So after this camp, um, it was time to start actually being a lot more aggressive. And I, I think I asked my buddy, we were on voice chat, I think I asked my buddy Bulldog to start putting down really aggressive uh, wards in their jungle. Because now was the time to start pushing and taking objectives. Here comes my blink dagger. <laughs> it's, uh, I've actually never, I've never done one of these. This is my first type of, uh, like, post-game kind of review of myself and and actually this is uh, if you want to get better at dota this is something that everyone should do is really look at your really look at your gameplay critically so we knew he could see us and i don't think oh yeah there, there's the chrono that was a good chrono take the rubik out of the fight Yeah. Like I was saying, it's good to, uh, to go back and uh, look at yourself critically. Um, you know, uh, look at your gameplay. Try to realize what you did right and wrong. Try to, you know, acknowledge what you did do well. Uh, but more, most importantly, find the flaws. You know, because you only get better by seeing what you did do. Here I initiated. Uh, pretty decent initiation. Caught out the one of their nukers, Skyrath Mage. Um, but here is where their TA takes us for a ride. Uh, fortunately, Bulldog, being an awesome number five, has dust, so kill the sniper as well. Um, their TA has to buy back. Oh no, we did kill their TA, okay, cool. So the TA bought back, it's good to know. I think we kill, yeah, we killed the Rubik here. Uh, I dunk a creep. <laughs> I tried to dunk a creep, that was, 
Not ideal. We still got him, though. Um, and then here is their TA. Being an asshole to our lich. Can't remember what happens at the end here. Uh, so Skyrath is back by this point. I don't think he bought back. Could be wrong. I wasn't really paying attention. Um, and, you know, I just decide it's, it's time to peace out. So let's look at this fight recap really quick. This is, I love this feature. They introduced this feature, um, a while ago, but I don't use it nearly enough. So I blink twice. There's just kind of like ultimate. Oh no, there wasn't a Sand King ult. Oh no, there, there wasn't a Sand King ultimate. Okay. Lena, Lena didn't even get to use her ultimate. Two light strike arrays. We did have a chain frost ultimate. Um, yeah. But we, there was a major gold exchange in our favor. So that's awesome as well as an XP exchange. So all in all, um, a good fight. A really good fight. And we got a tower as well. All right, so at this point, oh, at this point I told Void, <laughs> I said, Void, let's go do something. Let's make something happen. Um, you chill and farm in the jungle. I'll let you know if I'm going to go. And I spot out the sniper, and I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Fortunately, I got the, uh, yeah, he has the chrono because he's going to go on Viz. We don't have a dust, so that was the right time to use the chrono. And then we just get out. We just get out. Um, so here I'm 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 building into my blade mail next, which is gr a, a pretty good decision since they have a TA. They have a lot of burst damage. They have the TA, they have uh, Skywrath Mage, um, and they have a pretty right clicky sniper. Although at this point sniper wasn't too fat. Um, oh, also I think at this point we noticed that their TA and their sniper had both built desolators, so that was something in our favor. In case you don't know, um, Desolator armor debuffs uh, don't stack. You know, Desolator minus is 7 armor, and you can't get minus 14 armor from 2 Desolators. So it's kind of redundant, um, which means they would be less effective in team fights. Um, so, you know, more money in our bank. Picking up some extra farm here. Hmm. So I've almost got my... Blade Mail. Blade Mail is an awesome item. It is, I think it's only 2200 uh, gold. Oh, can't open the shop. I think it's 2200 gold. Um, yeah, it's 2200 gold. And it's fantastic because it lasts five seconds and that's all reflected, especially if you're a meaty hero or if you have a, a, a Dazzle on your team. Because um, Shallow Grave actually will reflect. Will reflect. Well, you can use blade mail when you have shallow grave on you and you're at one HP because the damage well I've got a video uh, my last video explained all that shit um, so you can go click here if you want to see that um, but blade mail is a fantastic item to get and if you're a meaty hero and or they have a lot of burst on their team um, it's it's totally worth the 2200 gold totally worth it it can really uh really change up a game i mean 2200 gold is you know easily you know as an axe you're not a f very fast farmer but uh, you know if you're decent you can farm 2200 gold in just a few minutes um especially if you're like a position one position two or someone who has good cleave damage that's that's easily you can come by that very easily what was he saying in the chat Oh yeah, at this point Marana apparently was just sitting in their well, um, and they didn't feel like pausing for her, so we were like, you know what, we're not going to waste a pause on her, that's whatever. That's their problem. Um, she did come back, but I think she missed her, missed her window of afk -edness. so... Yeah, so at this point I'm just farming, and my next item... Um, is going to be Reaver, uh, is going to be a heart. Um, unfortunately, I had asked the courier to come deliver me my blade mail. I wasn't paying attention, and someone else used the courier, so I didn't get my blade mail. Um, so, 
for the next fight I did not have it, much to my chagrin. And, uh, well, lesson learned, pay attention to your shit when you want it. <laughs> and also, pay attention to other people's shit on the courier because, yeah. Yeah, Bulldog here was really on point with these, uh, these D-Wards. It's really appreciated. Um, and we knew this, this ward was still here too. We knew this, this, uh, psionic trap was still here. But, uh, we weren't gonna waste another ward on it. And psionic, psionic traps only give, like, one gold, I think. So, it's not like there's a bounty to be had on the traps. Yeah, I mean, she, TA can put out, like, a zillion traps. How many can she put out? Eight, and then eleven, so. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, I'm gonna be building into a heart next, uh, cause I just want to be able to really soak up damage, and being able to do that actually makes my, uh, blade mail even more worth it, because, um, it makes me less wary of damage in general, and I can just ref absorb it and reflect it, uh, or reflect it back, uh, with less, less done to myself. You know, the percentage of health missing will be less, so you know what I'm saying. Having more HP is a good thing, especially as someone who's initiating. And we don't have anyone else in our team uh, besides Void who can really initiate. And at this point, Void isn't too tanky. So once he uses his Chrono, um, you know, he's pretty much done. Um, here we go. Grouping up for a fight here. Um, and I ask, I ask Glitch to come put a ward up here. So just so we can see rotations. Um, and I know for a fact that they would have a ward on this high ground because they've been in their jungle a lot. So I know, I know they're going to have a ward on this high ground. So I think I ask, uh, I ask Glitch to deward this. Come on, Phil. Deward it. Do I? Yes. No. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm like, put your sentry here. No, blink up there and boom. I was right. So we're thinking about going high ground, but um, it's only 26 minutes in and yeah, Miranda didn't actually leave. She just was AFK a little too long and she comes back and we see her on the high ground here. We were thinking of going high ground because she was AFK, but um, I think we... We had a peek and she was back. Um, yeah, just a lesson to you guys. If you are going to have to AFK, um, just disconnect um, and then reconnect when you're back because at least when you're disconnected, you can at minimum pause it for 30 seconds. Your team can pause it. But if you don't, then uh, your team can pause it, but then the other team can just unpause. So, And if the other teams are dicks, then... That is what it is. Twenty-seven minutes in the game, we're doing fairly well. Let's look at the graphs again. All right, so we've got uh, about a six thousand gold advantage, and we've got about a three thousand XP advantage. Not not a landslide, but we're we've, we're ahead by quite a bit of gold. Um, and you know what, we decide just to take Roche, we've got wards, um, we've got team fight. I think all our, our ults were up at that point. It's unfortunate though that Sand King wasn't paying attention. He got, and we used all our shit there. He got arrowed, so he wasn't really much use. Um, fortunately we killed the majority of their team. Um, Yeah, but I didn't have my blade mail here. So this is where I wanted to have my blade mail. And I, at this point, I was like, what? Where the hell is my blade mail? And then I was like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. Would have been nice to have my blade mail. Fortunately, SK finally used his ultimate. And cleaned up 
the fourth person. So it was four for four. Let's see. They, yeah. So being an even exchange, they got a lot more out of it. Um, they got 1,800 gold. We got 600. Uh, let's see. Their Marana did have an arrow, but the Rubik didn't get to do anything. We all did something at least, but in the end, a little bad positioning, especially on my part. Um, probably shouldn't have chased. Led to it being a 4 for 4 exchange. And Lich was only able to get the Chain Frost off, so if he had been able to put armor on a couple of us, that would have been really helpful too. But, uh, yeah, uh, the positioning for that fight was not optimal. And we didn't get Roche either, so uh, we do attempt Roche in a little bit, uh, but that's what it is. Good dewarding as usual by Bulldog. He doesn't usually play position 5, but he did a really awesome job this game. If you're watching, man, good job. It's appreciated. Ah, it's leaking on me. I need a coaster for that thing. Oh, I don't have a coaster. Oh well. <clears throat> so Void picking off people, doing what Void does. Did he use his chrono there? Yeah, he used his chrono. Okay. So after my heart, um, after my heart, I will go boots of travel. Um, some go boots of travel earlier, but um, getting around wasn't too important to me. I did have, we had a lot of map control, um, and I had enough money for TPs, so it wasn't too big of an issue. Okay, that was weird. Uh, might be my computer is slightly overheating. It's like it's pretty hot in my room. I don't have an air conditioner. Like I said, just the open window. So avoid was like at this point he's like just start Roche. I will come. Um, and we had dewarded, I think, a lot of this, but uh, we we did know they had a psionic trap there. It's it's pretty obvious if you have a TA, you're gonna have Roche uh, trapped. So they knew this was up, and you'll see why they knew this was up. Awesome Yules by uh, by Lena. I jump in there, make sure he's done, and then we have a great dust. And we mop up uh, the other two. Boom. Skadoosh. Dunked. Uh, and then, yeah, we're like, well, Lena wanted to chase, and I think uh, uh, Murano was a little too fast. So, like, yeah, okay, let's just go do, let's go do Roche. <clears throat> I mean, it makes sense. You win a team fight, you're already at the pit, you might as well do Roche. Little did we know, <laughs> TA was in our Ancients. I don't know if you just caught that on the minimap. TA was in our Ancients, uh, so she knew everything that was happening in the Roche pit. Um, she could see. Uh, so TA was like... And, and, and we... Uh, yeah, TA was like, let's be cheeky. So we have Marana. Um, occupying us and the rest of us being a little slow on the uptake and TA grabs the Aegis um, not terrible not a terrible thing especially since we kill her here um, she would have blinked out almost guaranteed unless she was slow um, so that's why he had to use his chrono um, I think it was justified. Some people may say not, but I think she may have been able to get away. So, um, may as well just use the chrono and secure that kill, especially on their most powerful character. So, you know, she may have taken the Aegis from us, but we still got the Roshan kill and we still got her. So, not a total loss. 
And she's out of the game for like 40 seconds, so... Really, like, you can be cheeky all you want, but in, at the end of the day... We came out on top. Um... Let's see... Working my way towards my heart still. Uh... And, uh, yeah, just generally pushing and... Doing Dota. Words. Uh, also a great thing is Blade Mail kind of gives you that intimidation factor. And it kind of prevents people from chasing you or initiating on you. Because they know that, um... Well, you really don't want to try and initiate on an axe. Not a fantastic idea. Considering they were all ranged, um, they did group up quite a lot, um, which was kind of a, kind of a mistake, of course. Um, they should have dominated me, and I think they just, really just didn't position, position themselves quite well enough. So here we brace ourselves to take some more towers. Um, we wanted to grab another person though. I mean, we wanted to grab a kill before we tried for high ground, but we saw TA pushing top, so we knew that with their strongest person top, we could probably take mid or some some kind of tower. Um, and at this point, uh, we're like, hey, someone should go address top, and I'm like, I can do that. <laughs> and I almost get her. I almost get her. Um, at the time, I think I thought also if I, I'm like, I wish I had used my, um, wish I used my battle hunger on her. Um, but battle hunger, I don't think does damage until after the first second. So she still would have been able to blink. Uh, yeah. She still would have been able to blink. So almost, almost. In hindsight, I should have TP'd up a little sooner, hid behind the trees, and then blinked in on her. Um, I think I do something like that later, but TA is actually starting to come online pretty... I mean, she has her Deso. Yeah, she has her Deso, so I try to go mano a mano here. I use my blade mail a little too late. I was a little late on that. Um, fortunately, I had good team rotation, so I just ducked in here to hide and uh, yeah uh, Lena's alt is pure damage so it goes right through BKB and that worked out pretty well for us now I gotta say this Lena played a really good game really good game it, it's fantastic when you have when you play with players who know their role and know the hero um, because they can really utilize them to their fullest potential now this wasn't ranked this was just a pub match um, so you wouldn't see any incredible gameplay, but uh, still good. Still good stuff. What what did we do next? More farming, of course. Uh, we really w we knew that we could easily win the late game. We have a void. Um, we have a lich. Lich's ult never... Lich's ult, especially with a scepter, um, <laughs> doesn't really, what's the word, downscale too much in the late game, because, you know, it'll just keep fucking bouncing, and then you can get a veil and shit like that. Uh, SK had a veil, um, so we were pretty well equipped to go late, um, and Void was farming quite well at this time. He was working towards his uh, his butterfly. And uh, I don't think the sniper or yeah the sniper or TA, neither of them were were anywhere near an MKB. So I think as soon as as uh, Void was as soon as Void got his battle uh, butterfly the words <laughs> as soon as Void got his butterfly I think we decided to uh, to push good initiation by. My void. And here we go. Now at this point, uh, I realized my mistake. I didn't know that sniper was on the high ground. Uh, obviously that was kind of in their plan all along. 
Um, so not a great trade. Let's see what the, yeah, I was worth a lot of gold. How much gold was I worth? <laughs> 947 gold. So yeah, quite outpositioned. We should have, we should have had that award on the, the high ground by the ancients. That would have prevented that mistake, but, uh, I just went in and forgot that TA fucking hurt. So. While we wait for me to respawn, I think we had talked about TI5 a little bit earlier. Yeah, I'm excited for TI5. I just found out that there's actually an esports bar uh, downtown near where I live. I live downtown in my city of Ottawa, and there's an esports bar called the Blurry Pixel. I haven't been yet. Um, apparently, they have a wicked hummus platter, but I'm pretty psyched to go check it out next week, this week, for when you're watching it. Um, and I'll let you guys know how it is. Uh, maybe I'll take some video, but probably not. I'll take some pictures, maybe put them on my uh, Twitter page. Um, you can follow me at PKIDD411. And uh, yeah, it should be a really good time. It should be a really fun time. Um, I'm trying to rope my girlfriend into going. <laughs> uh, I think she'll come. I think she'll maybe come for at least one night. I'm hoping to go for three. I definitely want to go on the sixth, I think, which is the all-star game. Yeah, because the eighth is the final. So the sixth is the all-star game. Um, and that's... That's especially the day I want to go because the all-star game is, is just so much fun. Um, interesting tidbit, Dendi for the first time in TI history is not going to be in the all-star match. I still voted for him. Um, of course I voted for other players like Big Daddy and who else did I vote for? I forget. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of disappointing. I mean, I guess Dendi has, has had his, time in the all-star spotlight and there's a lot of really good uh, players especially very charismatic ones i think that'll have a lot of fun puppy of, of course is in it i think who else is in it maybe rtz i'm not sure but you could uh you can just go to the dota 2 site and find out but that game should be a lot of fun uh should all-star all games are always just a laugh just just a riot um <laughs> i remember the all i think it was the all was it the all-star match last year I think it was, was it ARDM? I think it might have been ARDM. That was, that was hilarious. You had guys getting, uh, heroes. They like, I had no idea how to, well, not no idea how to play, but they didn't play often. Um, so they played them at like my level. <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty funny. And of course you had the occasional tryhards. Because there's always someone in the all-star match who really wants to win. Usually because they're kind of bummed out about being kicked out of the tournament. <laughs> uh. Honestly, I think the all-star match should happen earlier. I mean, it's good that it's not like immediately before the, 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 the final, but I, like ideally, I think the, uh, the all-star match should happen like in the first couple of days. I know people I know at that I know people might complain that it would distract players um from their games and their you know um getting ready for their important games, their <laughs> the games that could be worth millions of dollars. Um but come on, we're the fans. We want to be entertained. Um actually, it would be cool if they had several uh, several All-Star matches. Like what if they had an All-Star match like at the beginning and at like the end or if they just did like an all-star match just like a all random all-star match <laughs> uh like every day of the tournament that'd be pretty cool if they just they just like threw all the players names in a hat and picked out teams that'd be cool yeah it'd be it'd be nuts i mean we wouldn't get any say but it might be interesting I think the reason they like to have the all-star match voted on though is because it really gets people involved and uh, um, I think it <laughs> I think it brings them a lot more money and a lot more viewers when they have the bigger names playing you know and ultimately when you think about it this 
this tournament is it is about the game but it's it's about the money too you can't deny that with almost 18 million dollars on the line people are going to care about the money it's crazy this this ti5 prize pool is greater than all the other internationals combined because the first year was a million second two years were 1.6 and then when they changed the whole um then when they introduced um the whole the when they when they revamped the way uh the funding was the funding mechanics worked um in ti4 then we had that huge spike of like you know almost 11 million and now we're almost at 18 million which is crazy like that's like this one this one tournament prize pool um i saw this crazy graph this one tournament prize pool is bigger than the entire um year of prizes for just about every other game um, I think the only game that has more is either StarCraft 2 or League of Legends, which is like a total of 20 million or something. But it's, Dota 2 is huge. It's awesome. And I'm so, I'm so privileged to be a part of it. And I so love that you guys are supportive of me in doing that. Um, another interesting thing while we're still watching me farm, um, I've been approached by someone to start doing a podcast in the fall. Um, probably starting in November, October, November. Um, and it's going to be a new site, kind of like a new media site where I'll be the kind of like the primary host. And so I'll be interviewing players, um, staying up to date on, you know, patches, the newest mechanics, uh, bring you some good analyses. Um, and generally, um, generally just staying up to date on the whole dota scene uh, being a, getting a whole lot more involved um you know the ultimate dream for me is for for this to become not just a hobby but like a viable source of revenue where i can give this like my full attention um I want to be able to give this my full attention because I love Dota. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, you might, you might assume, but Dota's pretty much the only game I play. Even when I'm not recording, I still play Dota, um, just for fun. Not as much as I'd like to, but that's how it is. I love this game. I've been, I've been playing Dota since the early 2000s when it was a Warcraft 3 mod. Never was into the competitive Dota scene of Dota 1, but, um, it's 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 just something that I've always played and loved. Um, <laughs> it's sad I've got <clears throat> I've got like <laughs> I've got dozens of games on Steam that I bought at last year's Steam Summer Sale that I haven't even begun yet. I haven't even opened them. I have zero minutes, zero hours of playtime on them. Um, so my wallet. Is kind of like ah Phil, but whatever. I want to play Dota. I'll play what I want to play. Shut the hell up, Steam. <laughs> All right. Um. Hey, Strune. That's awesome. Don't know if I was able to do anything with it. Let's 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 tune in and see. No, let's go over and grab the uh, the creep wave. <clears throat> I haven't talked this much in a long time. Whoa, voice is kind of getting raspy. But the raspy voices are sexy. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I denied this right as, right as Void was uh, TPing to it. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Yeah. So, um, Void definitely has his butterfly. Yeah, he's got Boots of Travel. He has Aegis. Um, oh, nice. She's got the Octarine Core, which means her cooldown is 37.5. SK is pretty much good to go. He's got pretty much everything he needs to have an amazing team fight. I'm, I'm working my way towards a, an Assault Caress. Um, 
because the reason I, I chose to get an Assault Crass is just for the armor, um, because they have the two Desolators. They don't stack, I know this, I know this, I explained that before, but the Minus Armor um, is something really nice to... to... Uh, mm, the Minus Armor is something you need to counter. And if I had a, if there was a dazzle, I'd be doing the same thing. Um, but most of the damage is right click. Um, there's just the Skywrath for magic damage, but, um, I think Lich was on his way. Come on, let me, let me click on Lich, piece of shit. Yeah, he's on his way to building a pipe. So he's got that hood. Um, can't remember if he actually finished the hood before the game was over, but, um, at this point, Void is like, we've got an Aegis. Uh, <laughs> let's fucking use it. We are stacked. Uh, we're well ahead of them. Let's push our advantage. So I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm totally down. I've got a heart. Let's fucking do this. And I picked up, uh, that plate mail as well. Um, oops. Let's see what our gold is. 1,200. So we're 12,000 ahead. Lich gets hit by this arrow, but that doesn't matter because Void jumps in with the big chrono, gets three. Um, kills the sniper sniper buys back i get in there we have the epicenter we have the lich alt and uh of course my call goes through bkb so i get everyone on me we have zero casualties everyone's pretty much full hp still it was a fantastic fight and uh here we go we're not you know why not push high ground obviously the logical thing to do they've got four people down they've just got a sniper uh, Void is stacked as fuck. He's got his evasion plus his backtrack, so they pretty much can't do shit to him. And, uh, yeah. I mean, if this were a lobby, it would have been called GG, I'm sure. It would have been, uh, would have been done at that point, but, um, of course, since it's not, there isn't a GG button in, uh, you know, pub or ranked, for that matter. I kind of think there should be, but I think it should be... I think like three of your team should have to vote GG. You can't just be like, no, maybe maybe all five. I think all five should be able to should have to vote GG. Although you may have the occasional asshole who doesn't want to. Uh, but I think if all five players are are in agreement, then you know <laughs> you might as well call a good game. So at this point, we're like, yeah, let's just go for megas. I don't know what Void was doing here. <laughs> Void decides not to attack the barracks, but uh, not a big deal. And of course, gotta use that chrono if you got it. I think he got an eggs. You get an egg? Yeah, he got an egg, so it's pretty low cooldown. And I jump in on this guy, he's dead. Um, it's pretty much game over. We just have this TA over here. Fortunately, call works through BKB, so that's awesome. Pierce the spell immunity, and uh, yeah, that's that. It was a pretty good game. I think I ended like eight and three or something. Not that that matters as a as an axe. Your kill kill score doesn't matter a whole lot, but uh, but it was a pretty good game. I'm not gonna not gonna complain um this game i was just going into it like you know what let's have fun let's just play axe axe is kind of one of those more laid back heroes where you can just stand there you can almost afk and just take shit <laughs> take shit from people um yeah it's a fun game um i hope you guys enjoyed this uh this replay and commentary um let me know if you let me know if you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff uh, I kind of like doing it. It was a good insight for me. Um, I got to see some of the things I was doing well, some of the things I wasn't doing so well, namely time management and initiation points. Um, <laughs> but it was a good time. So yeah, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. I come out with videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the morning uh, in North America. So that's when I upload. <laughs> I will see you guys soon. Take care.